Hello and welcome to this afternoon Thanksgiving Day Taste Challenge. In fact, this is Friday, so I'm going to check it off my uh, date book. I got this stuff so ingrained in my head, I'm not going to forget, but I like to do it just in case. So I'm going to check off Friday. Already did Thursday. This and then Saturday and Sunday morning, I suppose I'll do Dawn Busters. <coughs> um, then Sunday morning at 10.30, I'm going to host Stout Sunday because Johnny Neely is busy. And I, it will be Stout Sunday slash the official 10th anniversary celebration for Louisiana Beer Reviews because that will be the actual 10th anniversary to the day. It's the thing last night. But, I mean, you know, you know, there's no need to be that specific. But, anyway, November 2010 to November 2020 <coughs> and beyond, we hope. Okay, so we have today Old Thompson. American whiskey, a blend. Doesn't say Kentucky whiskey. It says it's bottled in Kentucky. So why, why do they say American whiskey? Well, it's because the whiskey is sourced from different parts of America, not necessarily Kentucky. It's like if you buy wine, it might say American red wine. Okay, well, it means the wine could be coming from different parts of America. Now some wine will say New York red wine, right? Well, then you know it's from New York. Burley Sullivan says, you, happy Thanksgiving. Same to you, same to you. We had a modest meal, uh, but it was good. I enjoyed it, but I didn't eat too much, I don't think. And um, But it wasn't too elaborate. I was kind of sorry they didn't have macaroni and cheese or, or stuffing. But uh, anyway, uh, that's the situation mm -hmm. at hand. Um, but it was still very nice. The game started off nice competitive but then it began to deteriorate and listening to it on the way home i said Ugh, detroit in his 41 17 and whatever i cut it off all right old thompson 1904 introduced uh i don't think they still make an old thompson straight bourbon but never say never when you're dealing with sazerac <sighs> that was never really their big thing anyway if you look at the old advertisements it's they're focusing on the blended, and then that in the background, they'll say, "And you can get the straight bourbon." Okay, but um, it's a look. It's a different blend ratio now. In, in the fifties, it was um, well, it was higher alcohol back then. It was eighty six point six proof, like a lot of whiskey brands. Then now it's eighty, like a lot of whiskey brands now. It used to be twenty percent of retraction correction. It used to be sixty five percent grain spirits, thirty five percent straight whiskey but now it's 80 20 80 percent 80 percent grain spirits and only 20 percent straight bourbon which is the minimum they can't go lower than that that's the law all right the competitor from 1950 46 years later kentucky bow hit the market famous never wasn't famous in 1950, and it ain't famous now, but here it is with its gold neck label. Nice green label. Green, gold, and white. Most of these blended whiskeys have the drabest, most drab-looking labels, but this one's nice, and it's got a little pep to it. This one's nice, too. It's an old-fashioned label, but it's nice. Uh, most of them be that, like a very bland yellow not too attractive um there's two horseshoes and there's some coins of no meaning really and some little gold swishes swishes um kentucky whiskey a blend okay well now we're more specific kentucky whiskey this whiskey is from kentucky only Ken bottled by kentucky bow distilling yeah right um bardstown kentucky Oh, well, <clears throat> let me tell you. Let me tell you something. That's Heaven Hill. And then there's a symbol, which I don't know what the meaning is. Kyle says, are you going to pick right this afternoon, laughing out loud? Yeah, I was about to talk about that. I was about to mention that. I was pretty shook up this morning. Like, um, it was an example of overconfidence. 
And then during the video, I was like, oh, it doesn't matter. These things happen and all. And then later, I was still bothered by it. I was kind of, kind of like Rocky, you know. I was like, I was saying like, hey, remember when that thing on TV didn't bother me? It did. So it did bother me. Because I was thinking, how could I get that wrong? I thought I knew old Thompson. You know? Senator, I knew old Thompson. I worked with old Thompson. Senator, you're no old Thompson, right? So I, I thought I had it nailed down pat, but I didn't. You can tell it's a Heaven Hill bottle. It's got that straight cylindrical bottle. No lip at the bottom or anything. It's straight up and down. <clears throat> got this for six forty nine in uh, Meridian, Mississippi. Looks like all their blended whiskeys are the same price, six forty nine. dollars I, I think Mississippi is some of these weird states where the, the store doesn't set the liquor price. Like the state sets it. It's like a, they call it a control state. In other words, you own a liquor store, but the prices are told to you. You say, yeah, but I went in there and they were having a sale on certain brands. Yeah, but that's still, the sale is dictated by the state liquor control board, I'm telling you. I think that's how it works because every store had the same exact prices. I was like, well, I guess Mississippi doesn't believe in free enterprise. You say, but they are conservative over there. Uh, yes and no. <laughs> if your state government sets liquor prices, it may not be as conservative as you first believed. Okay. Makes no difference to me. I don't live in that country. You say, you mean that state? Yeah, I mean that state, that country. The United States is, the state's got so many different rules and laws and traditions and even way of speaking that it's almost like 50 different countries. But I'm a union man, you know me. I believe in a union of states, these United States, a union of free states. You know where I'm going with that. All right, so, uh, uh oh, gold and brown, chestnut, amber. Oh, well, 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 what do you know? Not the same shade. The old Thompson's darker. You say, well, it's four years older or older. That's right. It is at least four years old because um, there's no age statement. So if a whiskey has no age statement, going back to the war, if a whiskey has no age statement, then it must, the youngest whiskey in that bottle can be no younger than four years old. That's it. That's the cutoff. Do you have to put an age statement on a whiskey bottle? No. But if you don't, the youngest whiskey must be at least four years old. It's your option, but that's the, that's the qualifying uh, thing, uh, regulation. In Canada, all whiskey must be at least three years old. Must be. See, so if you didn't put an age statement, you know it's all at least three years old. In the U.S., uh, there is no minimum age for whiskey. Whiskey can be three days old. You could sell it three days old, three day old whiskey, fresh. You could call it fresh, Mr. Fresh. You could color it with caramel, caramel color. These have caramel color almost invariably, almost certainly. I can't prove it, but I would assume it. Um, I give all these ideas and then when I go to the store and see them later on the shelf, I can I can complain that I'm giving out ideas. People are stealing them, but I am giving them out. I'm not four years in a cask, says Burley. Exactly. It has to be aged at least four years in a, well, I guess in America, we say oak barrel, a barrel, same as a cask in England or Scotland or Ireland or Wales um, or the Isle of Man or the Channel Islands. But you get the point. Um <clears throat> It has to be aged at least four years in a barrel, a wooden barrel. Charred oak for whiskey. Could be used, could be new. That doesn't matter. Now, if it's corn liquor, it, can, it has to be un, uncharred, uncharred oak. So what's the difference between corn, whiskey, and bourbon? 
Right. You're right. There is no difference except for one thing. Charred oak versus uncharred oak. Other than that, there ain't no difference. Okay. That's the law. All right. All right. Now, you say, well, those things you're drinking today, are, I don't like to say drinking because, you know, I do these things sometimes at 5.30 a.m. And you know I would never drink whiskey at no 5.30 a.m. That's beyond any acceptable form of human behavior. No, I taste them at 5.30. I would taste them. I'll taste them. But to drink it, I couldn't, I couldn't stand by something like that. Uh, yes, these are cheap. $6.49 for the Kentucky Boo. And $7.99, that means boyfriend, French. So that was like a French expression. It means, so it means like Kentucky boyfriend. So I really, I'm, I, I sh should really, a woman, a woman should be buying this bottle, right? <laughs> People say, you say the most ridiculous things. I know that I do. I'm the first to admit it. I'm like Colonel Kurtz in Apocalypse Now. Sometimes I go too far, but I'll be the first one to admit it. Um, so Kentucky Bow, there is a black label. Hadn't seen it around. I never saw Kentucky Bow in Louisiana. I bought this in Mer Meridian, Mississippi. But there is a black label. I guess it's a straight bourbon. Ain't seen it. Old Thompson bought that right down the road. Yeah, right. Well, you know, 25 miles down the road. But I bought it at Total, Total Wine and More, and it was a $7.99 for a liter. $7.99 for a liter. And you can get even bigger bottles. You can get a 1,000. 750 milliliter. So you can get a thousand, which is a liter plus an extra 750. And it's even cheaper per ounce if you buy that or cheaper per milliliter. But I didn't want that big old bottle. The liter's big enough. It's going to take me forever to get rid of it. Um, <clears throat> well, I learned my lesson. I, I say that, but then overconfidence and hubris will creep back in, right? So then a month from now, I could just be. Uh, I could be like Alexander the Great in a month thinking Philip is not my father. Zeus is my father. And then I start making a breastplate with the sun, you know, with Jupiter or Zeus on there and then start thinking crazy things. And you say he's going mad, but that's the, that would be the, that would be the punishment. You see, uh, Good day, sir, says Michael Hill. Good day to you. All right, so I'll, I I hope I learned my lesson that I don't prejudge these things and, and think I have it down pat because I was so shocked this morning and then I was feeling down and shook up about it and I thought, you know what? You deserve it. Anyway. But what well, I mean, but what can I do to defend myself against myself? I'm defending me against me. But what can I do? I don't know these products that well in their blind taste tests after all. And they're very similar. So you can be very discombobulated and perplexed with these. That's my defense. Now, my accusation, my conviction of myself is that I think I took it too lightly. I saw a snail crawling along the edge of a straight razor. You did? And surviving. It's Burley's dream. It's his nightmare. They lie. They lie, and we must be merciful for those who lie, those nabobs. I hate them. I do hate them. Okay. <laughs> because there's a conflict in every human heart between good and evil, and good does not always win out over what Lincoln called the better angels of our nature. Sometimes the dark side. All right. Uh, is Carlo Rossi the best cheap wine out there? Well, I don't know because there's many cheap wines I haven't had, but it's certainly been very good and enjoyable. I've been impressed. I've been very impressed with lately, not the first go around five years ago or whatever it was, but I've been very impressed with the uh, Oak Leaf from uh, Walmart lately. Very impressed. <laughs> and, um, the price is wonderful, and uh, I think the wine group really improved that product. Walmart must have told the wine group, you want to keep this contract? 
because we're starting to get complaints and they might have said, whoops, we're going to fix it. And it's because I tried the Merlot the first time and I thought it was like, this wasn't that good. But this last time it was just dynamite. And now I did the Cabernet Sauvignon. I've been sipping on that thing. That thing's a jewel, you know, so I say, yeah, they did some improvements. Here will be. Yeah. Just like Trader Joe's, I think, got down, got put pressure on their contractors and said, look, their suppliers, right? They say, look, you can't, people are fussing about this stuff, this, uh, some of these IPAs and whatnot. You're not the only beer company that can contract brew for us. So I think the, they did a lot of improvements. I'm talking about Minhas, really, specifically, because I think uh, Gordon Beersh had it nailed from the start, you see. Those were always nice. I mean, Ace was only there a few years. He had the place clocked. Uh, have you ever had any beers or wine from Switzerland? Uh, yes, some beers. Uh, someone sent them to me years ago. I can't remember who. And uh, they were nice, really nice, really nice. But they're so rare. And um, I mean, here they're rare, you understand. And I never saw them again, but they were wonderful. Okay. Um, I'm sm Okay, I'm smelling nut oil, like pecan oil. I'll say that incessantly, but that's what I smell with this. And um, there's a corn. A corn bread, corn, not bread. A corn muffin, like a jiffy corn muffin. Well, that's sort of like cornbread, but it's different. It's a corn flour or something. Uh, it's hard to pin down, but it's some corn, yellow corn thing. And I'm thinking some charred oak barrel. Mm. Let's go over here. It was pretty clean. Now, that aroma was clean, and there was no, like, twangy, off, strange, cheapo whiskey things going with it. So I'm, I'm happy with that. That, that. That's a good start. That's a good start. Okay, let's go. Drag them. I'm going to be careful not to look too hard at these because there was a difference in tint. One was darker than the other. <laughs> but if I don't, if I just, you know, if I'm not looking at it directly, I don't think that I'll, I'll have a problem with that. Hmm. Well, that's a little weird. It made me think of a Heaven Hill rum. You say a Heaven Hill rum. Yeah, I'm not joking. Heaven Hill rums have sort of a distinctive musty, old musty attic, like you bit, bit one up in an old attic, or even a basement, some musty old dusty thing. And this this had that. Like, go get some uh, uh, clubhouse rum, the clear rum, which I think is made actually in Kentucky, like making rum. They're starting to make rum in Kentucky. I read that they're starting to make rum at Glenmore. They were only bottling and blending over there for a long time. They had stopped distilling. But I, I heard that they're making rum now, distilling rum. And I said, oh, yeah. Now Sazerac's doing like uh, Heaven Hill. They're just making their rum right there in Kentucky. All they need is sugar cane. And know-how, obviously. Well, hmm. that's a pretty developed corn aroma also. I'm pleased, though, because I'm not picking up this, you know, bad rush of that honeydew melon thing that I get oftentimes with um, with um, Heaven Hill. Okay, so I did eat lunch today, and I had turkey and gravy and, and mashed potatoes and some pecan pie and all that, and Milwaukee's best beer, pint can. Um So these things could influence it, you understand? When I do dawn buses, I haven't had a big lunch, right? But then I could uh, undermine those taste challenges by eating grits a lot, like eating grits, like probably the worst thing because it's grits is corn, right? See, and then you're going to drink corn products. So I think it's probably not a good idea. <laughs> okay, taste time, huh? <laughs> A 
like Lou Reed, the bells. Um, caught in a vicious circle, surrounded by your so-called friends. Um, that just tastes like stereotypical whiskey. It tastes like just common whiskey. If someone say, what does that taste like, man? Well, it tastes like common, everyday, run-of-the-mill whiskey. Seems a common way to go. Have you ever? Oh, already saw that question. All right. Jimmy Rowe. Um, ooh. Mm -hmm -hmm. That one is mostly like regular old whiskey, right? You get that 20% straight bourbon. Who, who, what bourbon is it? I don't know. If it's Heaven Hill, it's probably Heaven Hill straight bourbon. They make a green label. They make a black label. I went to Johnny Lee's house. He had the green label. They make a white label. I think it's 100 proof. White label is usually 100 proof on products, except for that cobalt with uh, early times. Um, but it does seem to have that underlying um, honeydew thing. But I was so tragically wrong this morning. I can't understand. I was walking and thinking, and I just, I was just sitting there thinking of things, but yet thinking of nothing at all. And then here's somebody coming in the room to my, you know, Ronald, what's wrong? I was like, nothing's wrong. Just, just give me a Pepsi. And they're like, no, you're on drugs. I'm like, no, I'm not on drugs. Just give me a Pepsi. And, and then they wouldn't get it for me. So I couldn't figure it out. Hello, sis. Somebody. All right. Um, oh, well. Uh, it just would be just, just whiskey. If you said, let's go drink whiskey, and someone said, okay. You could give them this, and they would just say, "Hmm." They might they might not say anything, pro or con or any. They just drink it, sip it, probably put ice cubes in it, and not think as anything remarkable. But I believe most people will ask what brand it is, right? Don't most people ask? So after you show it to them, then they'll say, "Oh yeah, oh, I knew something was wrong with it." But they never said that till you showed them the label. See, they was about to talk about how good it was because they thought it was Seven Crown. Ha ha ha. That's why I say you got to do these blind taste tests. Uh, that's fine. It's just a lot of corn, corn, candy corn, and some underlying charred oak. It's amazing that that would come through at all, being only 20% straight bourbon, but it's there, actually. And um, some nectar, like from a honeysuckle, and it's it's warm today. It's 70 degrees, room temperature right now. It's warmer outside. Um, it's very humid. Everything's wet, damp. <clears throat> this one's very similar. Mm -hmm. The price is about the same for these, so I'm talking about pennies on a dollar, so I wouldn't let price, the price wouldn't matter. The availability would matter, but that would be the case with most of the stuff I'm doing on this channel, so can't really consider that. Um, I just think that this one to my right, that's actually directly in front of me, it was in my right hand. I think this one is the is the Kentucky Bow. I think it's the Kentucky Bow. I'm not too confident anymore. But I think it's the Kentucky Bow by virtue of that slight honeydew melon undertaste, which to me is a negative thing. It's a it's a it's a deficit. It's a not yeah. It's a it's a fault. A negative attribute. I'm trying to just use the right word. It's a disadvantage to the product. You had disadvantages. What disadvantages? Will you're insane. Okay. Uh, 
I know I'm not smarter than you, Dr. Lecter, but had you catch me, Will, you had disadvantages. Okay. Um, I wouldn't get too excited about either one of these products. I would not run out to friends and family and tell them to, to go get Kentucky Bow or Old Thompson. On the other hand, I mean, it depends on what your utilization is going to be. You say, well, we're making jello shots. Well, don't even buy these two. You can get stuff cheaper than these. Just go to CVS Pharmacy with your CVS card and you can get a huge handle for like $11.99. True story. Or go to Walmart without a card. You don't need a rewards card at Walmart. Go right there to Walmart. And they got blended whiskey for $10.99 a handle. And that is not a joke. And I'm sorry, I said the wrong price. It's $10.96. And I don't think it's going to ring up that. It's marked 1096 on the tag. But I'm telling you, I think it's going to ring up 996. I've had that happen before. It never goes above. Okay. If you're just going to blend it with um, Yoo-Hoo or blend it with uh, some uh, apple juice or whatever you're going to do, like I say, go more, get that $10.96 handle bottle, and, and then you got it. You got it made. Uh, I know I wouldn't pay extra for any of these things. No way. I mean, unless I'm buying one just for the review to say I reviewed it. That's different. So, Burley Sullivan says Red Dragon. Uh, not really. Try Manhunter. All right. Of course, Red Dragon was made with the dialogue almost verbatim, literally from, verbatim from the eight, 1986 original. Um, from what I hear from Complete Strangers, I've never actually watched. Well, I don't like, I don't, I don't really like movies. I don't watch movies. I watch beer reviews. Uh, would it help if you drank water between tastings? I don't know, but it wouldn't hurt, I don't think. Chadio says, Happy Thanksgiving, my friend. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Chadio in Colorado. I appreciate you joining our hangouts and everything. Like to have new team members, you know? All right. Um, hmm. This is a pretty tough challenge, though, honestly. But like I say, with these kind of products, these inexpensive blended whiskeys, man, just get the cheapest one. And I'm telling you right now, Walmart has got them all beat think. <laughs> Let me calculate something real fast. I might not be right. Let's see. Five, nine, nine, five, about 1,000 times 1,750. Well, okay. International markets got them all beat because they got clubhouse whiskey blended for $5.99 a liter. And that's cheaper. If you converted that to a handle, it would be $10.48. Except that that's only one store in Metairie, Louisiana. And most people watching this video don't live anywhere close to Louisiana. So we have no practical purpose, practical uh, utilization for you. No practical utility. But go to Walmart and you got it. $10.96 and maybe $9.96. I'm telling you, watch when it rings up. And you can get the cheapest old blended whiskey and for all your jello shots, all your little cocktails in which the quality wouldn't matter much. And there's a lot of cocktails where quality, it doesn't matter, you know. You understand that. It's like somebody told me, their grandma drinks whiskey with milk. Or people might, right, this time of the year, Thanksgiving and um, Christmas, what are they doing? Buying the eggnog at the store in the dairy section. And there's Southern eggnog if you if you want to pay more for a label, whatever you want to do. But uh, it's not spiked. And then you buy the Walmart whiskey, which is Caliber, which is actually sold at other stores in Walmart. But I'm saying it's mainly a Walmart whiskey. And then you, there you go. You got it. You got it, man. It's perfect. A million here, a million there. You got it. Oh, so you're making moves on your own now. I got ears, Frank. I hear things. You know, so... That kind of deal. I mean, they, these do have a nutty flavor. Okay, I'll grant them that. 
I'll, I'll, I'll concede that. There is a little nutty quality here. So, you know, they're not terrible. I mean, I'm dramatic and I go put on a lot of theatrics and whatnot. I do, I do honest reviews, though. And that's the fact. I don't make up these things and just try to say a, a score that is going to sound good for the Internet. I don't play that game. Well, I'm just saying, I mean, I do some tomfoolery. I mean, we, all, we know that. OK, but um, they're fine. Fine, not too remarkable. But on the other hand, they're not horrible like some people might make them out to be. Which one would I buy? Uh, neither, neither one, <laughs> you know. But uh, <clears throat> I think, I think it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. I might get it right, but it it doesn't make a difference because they're so close. They're so shock to me shockingly close but i still think this is not the old thompson if it says ot i'm gonna really feel bad but who this checking in i'm about to check out but somebody's checking in jules oh hey julie hello ron peeps happy thanksgiving y'all and then she's got a turkey a, i look like a pumpkin pie of course it could be sweet potato pie a turkey leg which i had one today a smiley face and a loving face. Okay. Um, so I think this is not the old Thompson. Ha, I got it right. I ain't bragging now, though. After all that I went through today, getting it wrong this morning, I ain't bragging no more. But like I say, I might, I might fall off the a wagon of not being humble and go back to prancing around and uh, strutting up around and talking about, look at me. I'm like Nebuchadnezzar. I'm great. But, um, so is old Thompson better than Kentucky bow? Yeah, I guess, but it isn't better by much. Still final summation. Old Thompson hasn't been doing too bad. I didn't know what to think when I bought it at, at Total Wine, but it hadn't been doing too bad. It hadn't been doing too bad. It hadn't set the world on fire. It hasn't uh, been a paradigm shift or anything like that. But it's 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 okay. It's okay. It's okay. And that's what uh, Eric Fraunfelter and uh, Nate K said years ago on a hangout. They said uh, it's it's okay. They had to admit it was okay. They probably never drank a drop since. Probably still sitting on a shelf somewhere at their house. One of the two guys' house. But uh, anyway, they're not whiskey guys anyhow. All right, so um, thanks for watching this video production tomorrow. 50% for the day. Yeah. But still, I'm in pretty good shape over, overall with Old Thompson. I only got it wrong, what, what twice? If I got it, I know once this morning, but um, yeah, I've been doing really well with it. So, man, a little hiccup. Okay, a little screw up. Uh, Saturday morning, I'm going to go up and start. JW Dance Charcoal Perfected, which is a new formulation of it, and I do believe a cheaper one, but whatever, I don't control that. I just bought it because I saw it, and we can get it here. So it's JW Dance Charcoal Perfected, introduced 1956, I think reformulated about a year ago, but anyway. Uh, and then on Sunday morning, it looks like we're going to do, we're going to have a competition against King Square. From Florida, I guarantee I ain't going to get that wrong. I guarantee I will not get that wrong. No way. Uh-uh. Ain't going to happen. That is the strangest whiskey I ever had, and I will not get it wrong. But that's an aberration anyway. I, I bought that product in Texas, and I've never seen it since. It's a strange one. Uh, then next week, I guess on Tuesday, I need to do a Monday. I don't know. Monday's going to be a, a problem. But uh, we, we'll do uh, Sunnybrook. Been around for so long, since the 1890s, and nobody buys that stuff. But anyway, Sunnybrook got it so cheap for a liter. And then we're going to close out with the real winner, the king, not of the nighttime world, not the king of the nighttime world, but the king of blended whiskeys, American blended whiskeys, Seagram Seven Crown. It's called Seven Crown because it deserves to wear a crown because it is the king of the American blended whiskeys. Uh, so from what I can tell, certainly the best-selling one by any measure. 
King, he said King Diamond. All right. Uh, yeah, Lester Diamond. I'm talking about Lester Diamond. Next time, bring a pistol. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so thanks for watching this uh, video production. I gotta go. I gotta go meet Easy Andy uh, about something. So uh, talk to y'all later.